So all you students out there, this is part two. So all you students out there, don't get me. <laughs> don't get me. And it's sad because this is the last part and I only have four decks left. But uh, moon, main moon deck, cloud deck. Yo, this is something from my childhood. I really enjoyed Card Gather Sakura. I did, I watched the dub version, obviously. Um, I didn't learn Japanese or anything like that. I just find that it, it works with the moon phases a lot better. I think that because the moon moves so quickly that it definitely catches quick energy, but it can catch quick energy that may have a long lasting impact. So even quicker than Mars. And I, it feels like it's more, um, a little more tapped into your own personal desires as opposed to Mars, which might be an external force kind of forcing you to recognize your desires. I kind of feel like with moon decks, they're a little bit, um, they're a little bit more inwardly focused, even though Mars is pretty close to like the, the, um, like inner planets. It's not like a Pluto or a Uranus or Neptune or anything like that. So that's that. Mood, Deviant Moon. Trickster, I love it. I love being able to go through it. Great sense of humor to me. It gives you warnings. It's a deck that if your desires are a little bit off, if you are a little bit corrupted as a person, um, it definitely shows up and it definitely gives you warnings about going about certain things that way and not necessarily always giving uh, advice to course correct but definitely telling you that if you don't these are consequences for it and lastly Neptune okay <laughs> Neptune mood deck this is hard I want to say they're kind of both mood and they're kind of both main and I use this one a lot early on I'm using this a little bit more this one is if you have really wild dreams um, you're trying to figure things out but a little bit more fiery I think your crown chakra is a little more active not in an aggressive way for you to get it but I think there's more room to dream with <laughs> with this deck there's a little more to dream with this deck a little more fanciful um the sky's the limit with that deck shadowscapes is a little bit more i'm trying to wrap it up shadowscapes is a little more i feel like advice heavy um it it shows you your faults it's very forgiving very loving it definitely tells you when there's illusions it definitely tells you when there's issues regarding your thoughts and a veil over that but it's very helpful it definitely can help you work through some of those blockages in a loving way this one I kind of think you have to be prepared to um, really learn to edit like this is if you have a really I won't say corrupted but a really influence influential aspect at Neptune and this one is kind of like it's almost like Neptune itself coming down and telling you what it needs to that higher celestial wisdom coming down to you as opposed to you you like your your Neptune is on fire <laughs> for you so those are all of the decks. This is part two. Check out part one if you haven't. And so I guess I'm going to do a tag for people. Um, two tags. So the first one is because I explained decks in this way, uh, going through each of the planets, you can put Chiron in there if you want to. What decks do you find in your collection that represents each of them? And then another tag would be, I don't know if this one is out there, but which decks represent a uh, each house because I don't really deal with houses but which decks deal with each house so um, yeah I'm so glad that you guys watched and yeah stay tuned check out my other readings things like that go ahead 
I'll talk to you guys later.